started. Um, again, I wanted to welcome everybody to our um, 2017 Healthcare Reform Webinar. Um, I'm Justin Brogdon. I am the National Sales Manager here with HSA for America. Um, during the webinar, we will have the lines muted. If you have any questions, I will answer them at the end. Please put those in the chat box, which you should have access to. And um, yeah, we won't take too long here, just a brief overview, and I want to point out a few uh, particulars. So, uh, as you can see, I'm here to uh, clear up some confusion and show you guys how to find the best value uh, in a health insurance plan, including some um, considerably less expensive options outside of uh, Obamacare with our um, health share plans. So, open enrollment started last Tuesday. Oh, we're not getting there. We go. Started last Tuesday, November 1st, and will um, continue until January 31st. So you've got that window to get your plan in place for 2017, unless you have a qualifying life event for a special enrollment period. Uh, if you do have a qualifying life event, you could get a special enrollment period and get coverage outside of this window. Some important dates to note, uh, in order to have your plan begin January 1st, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you have your enrollment completed no later than December 15th. So the 15th is the deadline for a first of the month effective date of uh, the next month. So if you submit your enrollment on the 16th of December, that policy will not be effective until February 1st. If you submit it on the 16th of uh, January, it's going to be March 1st. And also another point to make is that the initial premium on the policies must be made by the 25th of the month that you are have submitted your enrollment for that coverage to um, begin the first of the next month. So if you submit your coverage on the 14th of, um, of December for January 1 effective date, but you don't pay that first premium until the 27th, again, that coverage won't begin until February 1st. So with uh, the Affordable Care Act, I'm sure many of you guys are seeing with the, uh, the cost of health insurance these days, there certainly are some some cons and some pros that we need to look at. We'll start with the pros. So some, some of the great changes that we've seen as a result of Obamacare. Obviously the first one is that no one can be turned down. Uh, so the, um, you, never, you no longer have to qualify for the coverage. So that gives access to a lot of folks who did not have access um, previously. No more exclusions for prior health problems. So those of you who had grandfather plans and even grandmother plans that you carried and had some pre-existing conditions that they may have put a rider on and didn't cover, now you can get a plan that covers those. And uh, more coverage than ever before. On the flip side of that, some of the uh, major downsides to what we're seeing right now with the Affordable Care Act are that the, the uh, cost of health insurance are skyrocketing. We're seeing a lot of our clients uh, looking for alternatives and really trying to wrap their heads around what their options are. So that's why we're here. Um, the doctor networks have changed considerably. Most all of the doctor networks these days are HMOs or EPOs, which an EPO is very similar to an HMO with the exception that with an HMO, you have to um, establish a primary care physician and get referrals for specialty care. Uh, with an EPO, you do not have to get referrals for specialty care. So the PPO plans, which gave you the greatest access to care, those are becoming a dinosaur. And as uh, many of you have seen in your own areas, um, there's a lot fewer choices. So in many uh, geographic areas, there may only be one carrier to choose from, which certainly um, limits competition and no uh, competition to drive the cost down. So it's another downside what we're seeing here. So all the plans have to include the 10 essential health benefits, which uh, 
can contribute greatly to the overall cost of the plans. I'm not going to go read through all of these, but as you can see, hospitalization, maternity, mental health, prescription drugs, uh, all of your preventive care is covered, not subject to a deductible or any coinsurance. And pediatric uh, care for your kids, 18 and under. Uh, really trying to hash out what type of plan is going to be best for you is really a consideration of, of what your needs are. So there are two basic plan structures um, historically that or plan models that we've seen historically. The first being a traditional copay plan. Um, these were started in the late 70s, early 80s with the uh, invention of the HMO, and a lot of you guys who've come off corporate plans are very familiar with these plans, so have set costs for what you pay for different services. Um, there's a wide range of deductible options, and uh, we see these plans especially very popular with um, parents who have kids who go to the doctor a lot, and they want to know uh, that they are going to have a set amount that they'll pay if they do have to go to the doctor. The second type of plan is a high deductible health plan. So these uh, historically have been uh, called catastrophic plans, and uh, particularly the ones that we want to talk about are HSA qualified high deductible plans. So again, it's catastrophic coverage, lower monthly premiums typically, though these days we do see that that's not always the case. Um, the idea is that you are going to carry more of the risk on the front end, so the cost of the health insurance can be less, and you're going to be able to use um, a tax-incentivized savings account by having that, that type of plan in place. It gives you the option to open and fund a health savings account. So I'm not going to get too deep into health savings accounts. If you have any uh, specific questions about health savings accounts, you can put them in the chat box or certainly... I will um, show you our contact information at the end of this webinar, and you should definitely get in touch with us. We'd be more than happy to help you explore your options. So one of the biggest things that affects the overall cost of the health insurance, um, but is also one of the, the strengths of the Affordable Care Act, is that premiums um, can no longer be calculated based on your um, any type of health history or risk associated with your current health situation. So they can only be based on your geographic region all the way down to even your county and your age and whether or not you're a tobacco user. So you can't be denied coverage or have anything excluded for any uh, pre-existing conditions that you may have. Right. How much will your health insurance cost? Well, isn't that just the uh, topic of conversation these days? A lot more than you probably want to pay for it. Um, I want to make one note about HSA qualified plans also before I move forward, and that is that these days you can't take for granted that a plan is or is not HSA qualified unless it uh, specifically references it being HSA qualified in the plan name itself. We do see a lot of plans that are, in fact, HSA qualified, but in the plan name it gives no indication of that. So um, do your due diligence. Talk to your agent. Certainly can talk to someone at the insurance company, and they will be able to uh, confirm whether or not that plan is um, HSA qualified. So moving forward, we know that the cost um, – really are based solely on your age, your geography, and whether you're a tobacco user. Another factor in how much your coverage is going to uh, cost you has to do with where you fall on the federal poverty level. So now we have uh, advanced premium tax credits available to those who uh, are making below 400% of the federal poverty level. So as you can see in this slide, that would be currently for an individual making, you know, just over 47000 a year or a family of four at just over 97000 a year. And so that premium assistance deals with the monthly expense of carrying the health insurance. Um, the second type of assistance available to folks is the cost-sharing assistance. So I always like to say the premium assistance um, pertains to the 
cost of carrying that health insurance month in, month out, the expense of paying that premium, and the cost-sharing assistance deals with the liability within the plan. So for anyone who is 250% or below of the federal poverty level, as you can see, that's uh, just under $30,000 or $60,000 for a family of four. Uh, you're also eligible for some additional benefits, and really what that has to do with is your liability. So if you are getting cost-sharing assistance, what that is doing, as long as you get a silver uh, tier plan, it is going to lower your deductibles, your co-insurance, your maximum amount of pockets, all of those things. So definitely worth exploring if you are uh, eligible for them, though I will warn you when you are estimating your uh, modified adjusted gross income, just be aware that if you are self-employed, like many of our clients are, it is very important that you get that estimate as close as possible to what you actually expect it to be. If in the course of the year you discover that it's going to be uh, quite different one way or the other, you need to report a change with the um, your respective a marketplace that you enroll through so that they can update that because otherwise you could very easily get caught uh, with a I've seen up to a $2,500 tax penalty for people underestimating their income and getting more subsidy so it's not worth that I can tell you all right so you know, we used to focus a lot on these grandfathered, non-grandfathered plans. What we're seeing more, most often is that these, the non-grandfathered plans are all gone. Some of you may still have your grandfather plans in place, and that would be any plan, uh, major medical plan that was in place prior to uh, the Affordable Care Act legislation initially passing March 23, 2010. So if you have one of these policies, it does meet the, the um, standards of minimum essential coverage for the Affordable Care Act, so it does um, meet the standard to exempt you from having to pay the penalty, but it is not necessarily ACA compliant because it doesn't cover all of those 10 essential health benefits that we discussed earlier. And many of you that are on this line, I would imagine, currently have a new metallic tier Obamacare plans in place, and you have probably watched your premiums go up year in, year out, and are trying to sort out what your best options are. So, you know, what I can tell you is that when you're looking at your options, I know that what you, what most people do is they look for the least expensive plan that they can get. Um, that's a great place to start if you are very cost sensitive, uh, but I would also encourage you to do some serious research on any providers that you want to see and even if you don't have any particular providers that you um, that you see do some research on just seeing generally um, how many providers are coming up for your zip code or within you know 20 miles of of your zip code so that you don't end up with a plan that doesn't give you access to uh, quality care all right so as i mentioned you know, there are a lot of folks who have been carrying these who were transitioned off of a, a policy that was somewhat affordable to them with a grandfather or grandmothered policy and have been put into the Obamacare um, pool and have watched their rates go up outrageously year in, year out, and are looking for a way out, an alternative, something that is going to um, save them from the Obamacare penalty, but also save them from having to pay their monster premiums. As it stands right now, if you go without ACA-compliant coverage, uh, you are subject to a 2.5% penalty of your adjusted gross income. So the uh, it's, it's really important that you make a decision one way or another. You know, I... There are people who carry coverage just because they do not want to be subject to this penalty, and there are people who are looking for alternatives because they also want coverage that they can afford, um, but they don't want to be subject to this penalty. So I will uh, leave it at that. I do want to talk for just a second about health share plans. Um, they are a great option for some. Most of them are faith-based health sharing plans, and so 
These are plans that are not guaranteed issue, most of them. You do have to qualify for them, so there are uh, various amounts of health history review uh, where they look back. And um, so anything, if you have any type of uh, pre-existing condition, you can expect that at the very least, these health share plans are going to um, put an exclusion, a rider on that, that condition, and not cover you for that. But it could also make you ineligible. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out about faith-based coverage or, the, or health share coverage is that it is not health insurance. So it is a health share where the members within that sharing group, um, they pay to help each other with their medical expenses. So most of these are faith-based, and, you know, we're talking about thousands of people that are members, so there is a lot of strength in numbers. Um, but it does exempt you from the Obamacare penalties and um, really can be a considerably lower-cost option for you and your family. So I'll say this. If you're healthy and you are um someone who doesn't go to the doctor a lot and you just want to have coverage that you know is going to protect you in a worst case scenario, it is something you should absolutely explore because it could save you thousands of dollars a year. So really circling back on what we want to do, I encourage everybody on this line to be proactive. Issues definitely arise when you wait to the last minute. The systems slow up. And uh, there are a lot of uh, delays that can happen in processing, especially if you're enrolling through an exchange. Um, we do see as these deadlines approach and they get bogged down with people, the servers just are not, um, they're not, unfortunately, built to withstand that type of activity. So uh, I highly encourage you to, if you're on this line, my guess is that you are someone who has gone to our website at the very least and run quotes, or you're maybe you're a client of ours. Um, reach out to your personal benefits consultants. We are here to make this process as painless and easy as possible for you. We're here to be your advocate and a resource. So you can call our main line right now if you like at 800-913-0172 and a request a consultation with someone in your area. And lastly, I want to just kind of talk about why us, what makes us so different, and what is the value of, of working with us. Well, first off, there's no cost to you. Um, we are contracted with all of the insurance companies that we work with, and they pay us a commission. So the cost is going to be the same to you whether you go directly to healthcare.gov, or you go directly to Blue Cross Blue Shield, or you work with somebody who really is going to work hard at getting to know you and your family and your needs and um, be your advocate, not just before you get the coverage in place, but certainly once you have that coverage in place, having somebody that you can lean on when you need some help with claims. Um, and in a broader spectrum, as I mentioned, we're personal benefits consultants, so we don't just do health insurance. Certainly, we are health insurance experts, but we're here to help our clients uncover all of their needs and take a look at, um, for a lot of you who are self-employed um, and don't have retirement and benefits built into your, um, your jobs, we do that for our clients and um, help them really minimize their financial risk, not just with their health insurance, but just overall. So um, we also have a lot of extra things we do, offering uh, prescription drug discounts, lab fee discounts, and things of that nature. So there's a lot of value here. We're here to help you and to uh, work for you. So we encourage you to, uh, to lean on us and allow us to help make this process as quick and easy and painless as possible. All right, so let's recap. Uh, open enrollment began, as I said, last Tuesday, November 1st, and it's going to go through January 31st. The ACA compliant plans are a lot more expensive than they have ever been in the past, and the costs seem to just go up and up and up, and that is just for the monthly expense of having that insurance card in your pocket, not even considering the maximum out of pockets on the plans, which have gone up considerably this year as well. Uh, more benefits for all, of course including maternity and prescription drugs, but 
smaller provider networks, mostly HMO options, and in a few uh, situations we have run into PPOs. And when possible, HSAs are definitely still the way. They are putting you in the driver's seat, helping you keep those monthly premiums as low as possible, and then giving you a tax-free savings account to pay for all of your out-of-pocket medical expenses as well as uh, many things like vision and dental and holistic and homeopathic treatments that aren't covered by a traditional health insurance plan. They are HSA-qualified expenses, so there's a, a huge value there. Again, if you are at 400% or less at the federal poverty level, you might be eligible for some additional premium assistance, which would help you lower your monthly cost of carrying that health insurance. If it's below 250%, um, you also could be eligible for some cost sharing to help you lower your liability within the plan. And I can't stress this enough, be mindful of these 15th deadlines and um, make sure you get your coverage in place as soon as possible. So be proactive, again, because issues definitely do arise as the uh, deadlines approach. All right, so here's our information. Um, again, if you've got any questions, I encourage you to put them in the chat box now. And I'll be happy to answer them for you if I can. And I also highly encourage everyone, if you aren't already working with one of our personal benefits consultants, make an appointment uh, today or tomorrow. You'll, uh, you'll be glad you did. It'll save you a lot of headache. All right, guys, well, I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions, so I want to wish everybody a great evening. I hope that you have found this informative and helpful. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care.